with you. And also with you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you all to this morning's divine service as we gather around God's holy word and receive the gift of his very body and blood in the Holy Communion. A few announcements for this morning. First of all, Pastor Mac is on vacation this week. Sunday school and Bible class, join us in, please join us in the gym for refreshments and a study entitled, Will the Real Jesus Stand Up? Sunday school children, kindergarten through eighth grade, begin with an opening in the music room, and the high school Bible class uh, meets in the school seventh grade classroom. Please join us in the study of God's holy word. The book fair is going on. Our annual book fair runs through today. Check out uh, the great books in the lounge after the service this morning. Anchor of Hope, uh, please support Anchor of Hope by picking up a baby bottle this morning and fill them with coins, bills, or checks. Anchor of Hope is doing a great job, a great work in our community. Please join us this Tuesday, October 8th at 6.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall for a Bible study on human dignity led by Dr. Angus Manouge. All are welcome. We want to congratulate the 7th and 8th grade volleyball team, the girls' volleyball team, for winning their tournament. Um, also, thank you for all who supported the gala um, yesterday evening, uh, for all who attended and those who supported. It was a great evening, and we uh, thank you all. Trunk or Treat is set for Sunday, October 13th from 3 to 5 p.m. at the parking lot behind the church. Also, uh, please note this morning we will sing Psalm 128, and that is located in the worship notes in an insert in your bulletin. That's it for the announcements this morning. Please stand. The bells will call us to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart. and Confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Let us kneel for confession and absolution. O Almighty God, merciful Father, Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Glory be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, your patience and loving kindness toward us have no end. Grant that by your Holy Spirit we may always think and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 2. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, and every bird of the heavens, and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. And the man said, This is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother, and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, and were not ashamed. This is the word of the Lord.
The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 2. Therefore, we must pay closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels provided to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard, while God, who bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit, distributed according to his will. Now it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside of his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him. But we see him for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering and death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one origin, That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children God has given me. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Fairies, Pharisees came up and in order to test Jesus, asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. And in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God.
Spirit. Amen. Our text is from the Holy Gospel, read a few moments ago. Please join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. A young couple went on their honeymoon, and it was a late evening. The wedding and all the stuff was finished. They went to their honeymoon suite. It was a beautiful room, and it had all the amenities. They realized, however, there was no bed there. They were like, this is kind of strange. And they were just tired, so they realized that the couch was a pull-out couch. So they thought, well, I don't know what the deal is here, but let's go to sleep. So they pulled the couch out, and they slept on one of those hide-a-bed mattresses, you know, the kind that you can't really sleep on. Certainly not two people. And they had a horrible night. The next morning, the husband called the manager and he's like, what's the deal with this room that I spent so much money on? I thought I got a nice room, but there's no bed in here. The manager came up to the room and he said, sir, did you open the door? And he went over to the side door that they thought was one of those connector doors, you know, to the other room, and he opened it up, and inside there was a beautiful master bedroom suite with a fruit basket, chocolates waiting for them on their pillow, and a beautiful king-size bed that they could have slept in. When I heard the story, I thought, you know, that's exactly who a lot of us are in our relationships and marriages. Maybe you walked in here today and you slept on a couch last night. Maybe you slept in a hide bed and things are uncomfortable at home in your relationships. You thought your marriage and family would be a happily ever after. But then things got messy. Today Jesus talks about marriage and family. We know what a mess it can be. Instead of seeing marriage as a wonderful gift... For the mutual benefit of husband and wife, many people today just see marriage as a piece of paper which they can take or leave. Divorce with increasing frequency today puts asunder what God has joined together and now we have moved even beyond the quote traditional definition of marriage of the union of one man and one woman or become something of a definition of our own choosing. The results of this have been devastating. Our world is filled with broken and hurting people, broken and hurting families. Single parenthood, parent households are becoming more and more the norm. And holidays, instead of being times of togetherness and love, have devolved oftentimes into tug of wars between families, extended families and step families. The joke of marriage as the old ball and chain has unfortunately became a reality for many. With marriage being no gift but a burden, struggle, and imposition on my freedom, many simply put marriage off altogether. How far we have fallen from Adam's wonderful aha when God first presented his bride Eve to him It's a wonderful picture we heard in Genesis. Adam goes through all of the creation of God, but he is disappointed that there's no one for him until God forms for him a specially made wife. So that when Adam wakes from his sleep, he cries out in complete joy, Isha, ah, at last. Someone for him. It is the same joy we see for newlyweds on their wedding day. And we see a glimpse of the gift of God that marriage was intended to be. So what happens? Sin happens. It doesn't take Adam and Eve long to have their first fight. Adam blaming Eve for eating the forbidden fruit and giving some to him. And you can be sure it wasn't the only fight they had in their 900 years of marriage. By the time of Moses, God has permitted but not desired divorce because of the hearts of his people have become so hard and calloused. And today, for many, marriage has become a take-it-or-leave-it thing, just another option in life, like whether you will get heated seats in your new car. 
and now even to its redefinition as something of a civil right or whether or not we will allow anyone, regardless of sex, to marry. Yes, we've made a mess of marriage, but the answer is not to go the way of the law. That was the way of the Pharisees asking Jesus, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? No, the law cannot give us the reformation we need. It cannot fix our problems. In fact, according to St. Paul, the law only makes things worse, not only exposing our sin, but even arousing our sinful passion in us. No, laws won't fix marriage, or for that matter, any other of the problems that are plaguing our world today. Laws are good, but they cannot make us better, fix our problems, or give us the holiness that we need. We need a change of heart, a change from the inside out. Holiness is received but not achieved, and that is why Jesus brings the children up in the end of the gospel. It seems out of place here, doesn't it? Tacked onto the end of a reading about marriage and divorce and adultery, but it is there to show the way of God is the opposite of man of our pharisaical desire to achieve our own holiness. For the children brought nothing to Jesus. They weren't there to test him or to get anything from him, only to receive his good and perfect gifts, his blessing and love. It is the very thing that Jesus came to do and delighted in doing. Yes, Jesus delighted in children, just as Adam delighted in his bride and his bride in him. For in these children brought to Jesus, we see a picture of the marriage of Christ and his bride, the church. And it is in holy baptism where Jesus takes us as his own, vows to love us and give his life to us, where we become one flesh with him. And to rebuke the children coming to Jesus and to try to prevent them from coming would be to put asunder what God has joined together, not because they achieved it, because only they received it because their bridegroom delights in them, because they are holy through the forgiveness of their sins. And so for you and me, if we seek holiness through what we do, if we seek holiness through our performance of our good deeds and our avoidance of bad deeds, then our lives and our relationships with Jesus will end up tattered, torn, and broken. But our relationship is much more than that with him, much more than a matter of law-keeping, it's all gift. And even through the Holy Gospel we heard today is not a proof text for infant baptism. It helps us to see that all baptisms are like infant baptisms, that we receive the kingdom of God and become one flesh with our Savior as children. Whether we are eight days, eight years, or eight decades old, And that each baptism is not only for the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life, but our Savior's aha, his delight in us, receiving us with as the love of a husband and a wife on a marriage day, receiving us as his bride and giving us all that he has. And what God has joined together, let not man separate. You see, that is what makes sin so serious, not just because we happen to do something wrong, but because it ultimately is spiritual adultery. It's separating us from our heavenly bridegroom, and if left unchecked, it will lead to divorce. In such a case, the question of whether or not that is lawful really doesn't matter. It is destructive. It is life-killing, just as we see in many hurting and broken families and churches today. And when you're hurting and broken, you don't need someone to come and tell you what to do. You need rescue. You need a spouse to love you when you are unlovable and to forgive. Our marriages are not like that as much as we wish they were or could legislate them to be, but as I've been saying, there is one that is, and it is our heavenly bridegroom, our Savior Jesus, who comes to rescue, love, And give us what we need the most, the forgiveness of sins. 
Our Savior, who in his incarnation became one flesh with us, so that through his death and resurrection he might make us one flesh with him. And on the cross he spoke his marriage vow to us, his sacred I will, as he laid down his life for you. And so just as the tree broke that first marriage in paradise, so a tree has restored that marriage, our relationship with God. And in him we are washed clean and made holy. And that vow that Jesus made on the cross, he renews each and every day as he forgives your sins and places in your mouth his very body and blood, delighting you, you, making you his own, never tiring of you, never tiring of forgiving you. He holds fast and cleaves to his wife, the church. So the law will never solve our problems, make us holy, or return us to paradise. No, paradise, holiness, and forgiveness are all ours in Christ. We now live the life we have received as brides in the arm of our bridegroom, as children in the arms of our Savior. And with such a perfect bridegroom, we live not in fear, but in confidence, knowing that what God has joined together, let no one put asunder going back to that couple as I started with. The door is open and it's a beautiful feast for you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds through faith to Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray. Loving Father, your Son took the little children into his arms and blessed them. Help your saints to welcome little ones with joy that nothing may hinder their entrance into the kingdom and the arms of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, be near to all couples struggling in their marriages. Guard them from hardness of heart that would separate what you have joined together and reconciling them to one another to live in Christ's forgiveness and love. We also give thanks for the blessings of marriage as David and Bonnie Lafine celebrate their 51st wedding anniversary. Continue to bless their love for each other with your love in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, grant your wisdom to Joseph, our president, to all public servants and those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, that they may be strengthened and upheld in every good deed. We pray especially for those serving in our country, including Robert, Daryl, Nate, Anthony, Paul, Nathaniel, Anthony, Jax, Naomi, Ben, and David. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, you promise to abide with your people and uphold them in their suffering. Comfort all who are sick and sorrowing, especially the victims of the hurricane, for the victims of war in the Middle East and Ukraine, for Karen Carlson, who fell and broke her arm and is, will have an upcoming surgery, for Duena and Aaron recovering after being hospitalized, for Malcolm, Wayne, Sue, Carol, and Deanne who are ill, for Connie recovering after hip surgery, Robert recovering after a stroke, Bart for continued management of his illness, for Judith, Olga, and Joy, Tim, Benjamin, and Bernadette, Sue, Jennifer, Doreen, Timothy, and Ronald, Sharon, Debbie, Mary, and Francisco, all in treatment for cancer, for Chao Yang, Jan, Joanne, and Dave in hospice care, for the families of Janelle Mueller and John Vanderpai, who we remember today. Strengthen their faith during their trials and grant to each one of these your health and healing according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Lord, your Son gives us his very body and blood to eat and to drink in the supper. Grant us your grace that we may approach your table with repentant hearts, a firm resolution to amend our sinful lives by the help of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. God, help us by your spirit to fear you and walk in your ways in Christ, that we may eat the fruit of the labor of our hands and receive your blessings in all that we do. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we gather together the offering. We invite you to fill out the friendship register.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. Let us we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.